And so today we're going to learn how to set up GitLab Community Edition on a Docker platform. Now all this will be off of the GitHub image, Samir's GitHub image, and I'll place a link to this in the description down below. But this is the easiest way to use the GitLab Community Edition in Docker form, in my opinion. I will walk you through how to set up GitLab in a Docker container and link it to another Docker container that contains a radius, as well as another Docker container that contains your Postgres SQL. And all these will be working together inside your Docker environment. This will allow you to get some hands-on hands -on experience working with the software at home in a controlled environment before you get that job professionally with an organization. Now I will be doing this on a virtual machine in the cloud set up by Linode. And if you look down below, I have a link for you to get a free trial for Linode as well. But this can be done in a virtual machine on your computer. This can be done on a spare machine you got sitting around the house. This can be done anywhere. The steps are gonna be the same. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an account for Linode. And then once you sign in, you go to create. We're gonna do Linode. And I always go with the newest LTS of Ubuntu, which is gonna be 2204 in this situation. Select a region near me, or you don't have to if you don't want to, but for me, it's gonna be Chicago. And then I'm gonna go with shared CPU to save money. And for this example, since I will just be blowing it away once I'm done, a Node 2 gigabyte is gonna be plenty, but you may wanna do a Node 4 if you plan on playing with it for a little bit longer. And it's gonna to default to this Ubuntu US ORD name here, but you can change it if you want to. You can add tags. I'm gonna give this a root password. If you really wanna be secure, you can add an SSH key to it. And that is everything that we're gonna do for this example. And we're just gonna click Create Linode. And it's gonna pop up this Misha Sanus provisioning. What I like to do is click Once LISH Console. And that way I can see from the terminal the progress that's going on. Now, once you're presented with this login screen, what I always do is I close this LISH console, and then I'll copy this SSH code, and then I'll go to my terminal. I'll simply paste it in my terminal, and then being the first time I connect by SSH, it's gonna say, are you sure? We're gonna type in yes. It's gonna ask for the password we set up. And here we go. We are now logged into my virtual cloud. Now this being our first time here, we're gonna to need to set up a few things first. Specifically, we're gonna to need to run updates and we're gonna to need to install Docker. So first we're simply gonna do sudo apt update in order to update the package lists on our Ubuntu image. Now we need to install some dependencies that's gonna make running and installing Docker easier in Ubuntu. It's gonna ask us if we're sure, we're gonna click yes. And again, I'll have a link down below to all these codes that I'm entering. We'll need to add a key for the official Docker repository. We'll need to add the Docker repository to our app sources list. It's going to ask you if you're sure, you're going to hit enter. And now we will actually install the community edition of Docker. And now we'll simply check the status of Docker to make sure it's running and it is up and running. If you go and take a look at this GitHub project, he has a couple of different ways that you can start the GitLab community edition instance. My particular favorite is using Docker run commands. So what I'm gonna do is, um, first I'm gonna make a directory to contain my Docker run commands. And I'm gonna call it my SVIN folder. I'm gonna change directory to my SVIN folder. Now these Docker run commands have to be ran in a particular, have to be ran in a particular order. The first one you gotta set up is you have to run the Postgres SQL first. And so I'm gonna make that run command first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sudo bi gitlab dash postgres SQL and enter. So then we just simply copy over and paste what he has on the GitHub page and then do shift CC to save it. And then we're gonna do chmod, chmod plus X to make it executable. And we're gonna go ahead and run it. And as you can see, it's gonna have to pull it from the source. So while we're giving that a minute to start, we're gonna go ahead and do the second run command, which is gonna be for the GitLab rad radius container. And so we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're gonna do sudo vi, GitLab dash radius. And we're gonna copy and paste his instructions over here. One, but in each of these run constructions, not only are we given the container a name, but we're also given each container a local volume to store data in. So if something happened to the Docker container, we don't lose all our data. Or we're gonna shift CC to save this. And then we're gonna do sudo chmod plus X to make it get executable. And then we're gonna run it. And it's gonna pull this as well. And to start GitLab itself, we're gonna do basically the same thing. We're gonna do sudo vi gitlab-run, that's what I called mine. And we're gonna pod copy and paste over exactly what he has in his GitLab project. Now, my computer, I had to change the port numbers that it's going to, and I'm not very creative, so I simply just did 8080 for the web page and 2222 for SSH. 
And notice how here again, he, he has the volume from the Docker container linked to a local volume on the machine too, so you don't lose your data if something was to happen to the Docker container. So we're gonna do escape, shift C, C to save it. And then we're gonna do sudo chmod plus X to make it executable. And then we are going to run it. And it's gonna pull that image down to our virtual machine. Now this one may take a while because it's a rather big image. And now thanks to the power of video editing, it is finished. So we'll do a Docker PS to make sure everything is up and running. We have our three Docker containers are running. Now I personally will wait until it says that the GitLab has been up for at least five minutes before you get into it, because it will take a while to come up. And through the power of video editing, here we are at five minutes. So now we're gonna go and log into our GitLab instance. And remember, we set that up at port 88. And so we're gonna go back to our Linode, Linode instance. We're gonna copy our IP. We're gonna paste it into the web address bar and we're gonna put port 8080. So apparently even just to spin it up for just a one-time example, I needed more RAM than a Linode 2, 2 offered. So I simply deleted that Linode instance and I went back in and I'm creating me another one using a Linode 4. And again, everything else is gonna be the same in that. So once you have a Linode with the right amount of RAM, when you go to your IP address port 8080, you're gonna be met with a change the password page. And what we're doing is we're gonna set a password for the root user. Now it's gonna ask you to log in to GitLab Community Edition and it says your username. In this situation, it's root and then the password we just made. And congratulations, you are logged into your Community Edition GitLab. And I personally, the first thing that I would do is I would go into your settings, edit your profile and change your username from root. In my case, I'm gonna put it as bmorgan. I'm gonna update username. And so now you're good to go for testing purposes. The GitHub page has a lot more information if you actually want to get into testing purposes with code and some hands-on experience with that, but that's beyond the scope of this video. If you found this video useful, please hit the like button and click subscribe and the bell icon so you'll know the next time I release a video. If you want to see some more videos on how to set up your home network, this video series here would be very helpful. Thank you guys.